Now, think about everything I just read to you. I mean, let's just go through it. We talk about wisdom and revelation. That's awesome, right? You know, someone who's wise and filled with revelation. Someone who's bold. Someone who has favor. Doors open for them when they don't open for anyone else. They have this peace, this confidence. They have this joy, this magnetic persona about them. They have authority. They have influence. But if you have all of that and you don't have humility, then I doubt any of those other things are truly of the Spirit. Now, humility, let me just clarify a couple of things. Humility is not saying, oh, I'm a worm, or oh, I don't belong here, or oh, I'm terrible. Humility is not self-degradation. Humility is not self-criticism. Humility is not the dismissal of yourself or the denial of your abilities or the denial of your gifts, talents, and, and good qualities about you. Humility is not saying there's nothing good about me, though in some spiritual sense, it's true to say that we're nothing without Christ. Without Him, we're just filthy sinners. I understand that. But humility is not denying that you have a gift. It's acknowledging the source. Humility is not denying that you have ability or power or authority or influence. Humility is when you acknowledge that it comes from God. And so humility, I've seen people think that humility, they mistake um, you know, pride with confidence. You should be confident. If you know something, you know it. It's of the Bible. It's of Scripture. God has spoken to you. Have confidence in that. Humility is not a, a lack of confidence. In fact, if anything, humility comes from a great amount of confidence in God. And you know that despite everything that you've done, God still has blessed you. That's a mark of the Spirit. You know, the Scripture says, and I want to read this to you because I, I want you to really get a feel for what God thinks of pride. Remember I talked to you about some of the things that would disappoint God. I said that earlier in the message. But Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 through 19 says this. There are six things the Lord hates. So, so, so look at this. I mean, look at how much of an emphasis is being placed on this. There are six things the Lord hates. No, seven things He detests. Now, these are things that God cannot stand. Now, with the way the modern Christian world preaches, you would think that's some of the sexual sins that we list or a drug addiction or, you know, all, all those things are bad, okay? I'm not saying they're good. But we, we would probably most would list those in our mind. Listen to what this says. It says, haughty eyes or prideful outlook, a lying tongue, hands that kill the innocent, a heart that plots evil, feet that race to do wrong, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who sows discord in a family. The first thing he lists is basically pride. You talk about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And when I say the anointing, I'm not talking about the gifts and the call. That's separate. So the gifts and the call is your vehicle. The anointing is like the gas that your vehicle runs on. God will never take your vehicle away. But you have to make sure your vehicle is filled with gas to keep it going. But nothing will remove the anointing. Nothing will kill the anointing on your life like pride. Pride will destroy the power of God on your life. God detests, abhors, He hates pride. In fact, the scripture says in James chapter 4, verse 6, that God resists the proud. Think about that. God, in all his strength, with his mighty arm, resists the proud, but he gives grace or the ability to accomplish his will to the humble. Power and humility can flow through the same vessel. So don't be mistaken. Humility is not the lack of confidence. Humility is not... Um, you know, denying that God has gifted you. Humility is when you think it all comes from you. We need to be people who are so broken, so dependent on the Holy Spirit. We need to recognize our desperation. In the times that we are blessed and in the times that we are struggling, we must acknowledge and we must celebrate our dependence on the Holy Spirit. I will be the first to tell you that everything you see coming from this ministry, the books, the television ministry, the internet program such as this, the events that you see us doing where miracles happen, people are sick, none of that would have happened had it not been for Jesus. 
All the glory, all the honor, all of the praise belongs to Jesus. And when you keep in perspective who the source truly is, then you're walking in humility. When you acknowledge your dependence, your desperation for the Spirit of God, then you're walking in humility. And humility is one of the ultimate marks of true spirituality and the presence of the Holy Spirit on your life. So let's recap here. Number one, wisdom and revelation. Number two, boldness. Number three, favor. Number four, peace. Number five, joy. Number six, authority and influence. And number seven, humility. These are some of the marks of the Holy Spirit upon our life. Now, I want to pray for you today that God would continue to give you a hunger for His Word and that you would continue to be 